Hey, it's time for math class. Welcome. Manufacturing Math Lesson 1, Part 2, How Stuff Gets Made. We know generally that manufacturing works a lot like sculpture. You start with a block of material and you cut away everything that isn't the thing that you want to make. So the big question for manufacturing is, how much do you take away? And of course, the big mystery for manufacturing is, how do you know how much to take away. And of course that's where the math comes in. And we already know that we're going to use the math to support the manufacturing process, not just learn math for numbers sake. So believe it or not, it all starts with a table. Or as your high school geometry teacher probably called it, a graph. Yeah, I know. If you barely survived high school geometry like some of us did, you might feel like you've got an allergy to graphs. But take heart. Stick with us for just a minute, and this is actually going to make sense. First, let's review. Remember this? It's called the x-axis. Does anybody know why? No. Nobody knows why. It's arbitrary. It doesn't look like an x at all. In fact, it doesn't even look like half an x. But remember from geometry class, the x-axis runs left to right. Okay? Now we're on track. So remember what this is? It's the y-axis. And remember which direction the axis seems to run? It seems to run top to bottom, right? It looks that way. But in our world, in the manufacturing math world, things sometimes aren't the way they look, even if you're looking at them on the screen. So remember we said imagination is an important part of this exercise. So imagination's on, Captain. It's time to learn about the y-axis. For us, the y-axis actually runs front to back. Can you imagine the y-axis running from front to back? And why do we need to do that? Well, because we need to introduce one more axis, our friend, the z-axis. And it's the z-axis that actually runs top to bottom. So now we have the x-axis running left to right, the y-axis running front to back, and the z-axis running top to bottom. How are we doing so far? could not be more confusing, right? This is exactly why a lot of us hated this stuff when we were in school. And it's exactly why a lot of us think we're not good at math. Okay? So let's make this stuff start making sense. And to do that, we're going to bring in a simple table. Right? right? A table. Yes. Because if you can imagine, or if you can see a table, it becomes much easier to imagine an x-axis. And it even becomes easier to imagine a y-axis. Now, if you see the y-axis moving from front to back, you can imagine front to back on a table. And certainly that makes much more sense than just seeing one hung out in the middle of the air. And speaking of hung out in the middle of the air, we can now introduce our z-axis. And you can imagine that the Z pointing at the table top, you put a drill bit on the end of that Z-axis, and suddenly you can see that the Z-axis does indeed move up and down. This is an important perspective. This is a really fundamental thing. If you can get this in your imagination, in your mind, and understand how these axes, that's what we call them when there's more than one, one axis, two or more axes, it's, it's very fancy. If you can understand the operation and the relationship of these axes, you're well on your way because all manufacturing is based on an X, a Y, and a Z axis sitting on a table. If you can grasp what I'm showing you here conceptually, then you can apply it to manufacturing equipment and factory floors all over the world. For example, does this look familiar? It's an old school drill press, right? Exactly the kind of thing that you'll see in every fabrication shop, every machine shop, every factory in the world. And look. Once you see the drill press, it's easy to also see the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. No matter what you try to build with the drill press, it's always constrained to those three movements. Movement along the x-axis, movement along the y-axis, and movement along the z-axis. And it applies widely to shop machines everywhere you go. To see what shop machines do, we got to go back to the table. So for example, can you spot the x, the y, and the z in these machines? Can you see the X, the Y, and the Z 
on this machine. So no matter how sophisticated the machine might be, no matter what you're trying to build with it, it's constrained to move along X, Y, and Z. Let's try another one. Can you spot the X, the Y, and the Z on this machine? Big, sophisticated, expensive machines constrained to move along X, Y, and Z. Everything that you build, no matter how complex, is all going to code into movement along the x-axis, movement along the y-axis, and movement along the z-axis. If you get this, you can see it now. If you get this, you're well on your way. Let's try one more. Now, this is quite a machine. You can see by looking at it, it's very sophisticated to build, to very, to build very complex designs. But look, x, y, and z. The point of all this, of course, is that no matter how big, no matter how bad, no matter how sophisticated the machine, they're all the same. They're all constrained to geometric axes. As you get further along in your training, you'll hear people introduce additional axes, the A axis, the B axis. State-of-the-art machinery is running up to seven axes, but it doesn't matter. All of those axes are simply constrained along geometric progressions. If you get this, if you understand this concept, you get manufacturing math. You got it. Now all we have to do is just add some details. You're doing great. So now that you get how shop machines work, in the coming series we're going to take a look at what they actually do. So far so good, right? You're doing great. If you've got this, you're well on your way. We're going to make sense of manufacturing math. Thanks. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video.